So I've been, I was involved in uh, three sessions. The uh, Service Developers Roundtable, the INN Design Topic Session, both on Tuesday morning and then Tuesday afternoon, we had a, uh, a WiMAX Developers Meeting. In both of the first sessions, uh, Service Developers and the INN Topics, we, in both, we went through three technical topics, we had short presentations, and we had a roundtable discussion. The idea being to sort of come to some conclusions, issues, and then identify a team to, to work on these, uh, these issues. Uh, in the service developers session, we talked about the future of graphical resource assignment tools, talked about hooks and flat and things that could be done in the future and things that we would like to do to be able to support both beginner and expert experiments. The second topic was on portals. We looked at the Eugenie Experimenter yes. portal, um, the Gemini oh, portal, which is being called the Gini Desktop, no. and the Gini portal, which is being used to control the Gini INM tools. Um, we thought some arrangement to do single sign-on would be desirable, where you might go from the Experimenter portal to the Desktop to the Gini tools, for example. And we talked about ways to pass information between tools so that the tools are more independent as a workflow issue. And finally, we talked about introducing OMF into the Genie world for experiment orchestration in the way that we're introducing it to, to orchestrate the Genie tools. Um, certainly very useful for repeated experiments. It's, Max argues, is basically essential for really large-scale experiments, think thousand nodes. And um, but how do we get people to use it sort of in the middle, where they have to be able to write OMF scripts and, and, and deal with things. So that's the topic, I think, to be continued. In the INM design topics, um, <clears throat> Marshall bring him forward with a, a set of uh, things that we might be doing towards a unified experiment environment. And then we talked about three special, separate things. We talked about we want to run the Gimme tools on uh, the InstaGini racks, as well as the ExoGini racks, which is where they've been. The Gemini tools on ExoGini racks instead of the InstaGini racks, which is where they've been. And we talked about ways to do this. Issues with images, our specs, and, and so there's going to have to be a lot of work, a little work here and there, and then testing. Um, we talked about how the Gimme tools, INM tools, and how the Gemini INM tools are initialized and configured to do basic measurements and, and beyond. What might we do to unify that approach? Uh, how to easily set things up for basic measurements? And that's one of Marshall's things. How can we do easy things easily for beginning experimenters? Finally, we talked about the measurement data that comes out of both sets of INM tools. Right now, we're pushing it off to the storage service, which is based on IRODs. It's there. It's sort of a, it's a database, perhaps. A file representing a database or a giant table, but what do we do with it beyond that? Is there some way to define a, a more open, unified format so people can do further processing or visualization? Um, this is a very open issue. Uh, so the third session I was involved with is the YMAX developer session. We reviewed a whole variety of studies and tasks and the status of sites and what they're doing with things. There are studies about uh, negotiations with Clearwire about their spectrum. We're looking at an arrangement with Sprint to, to provide broadband services in an MDNO-like arrangement to researchers, sort of under the Gini umbrella, but beyond networking research. We talked about various different pieces we need. Uh, there's uh, custom PC, called yellow nodes, that are being built that we're going to pass out to people for for use in their um, sites and also as vehicular and mobile nodes. Uh, there's new software being written to uh, better integrate with the new airspan base stations. Uh, people are working on mobility. People are trying to get, trying to get Android handsets that are unlocked that people can use for research. Uh, lots of things going on. Um, there's a report from the sites. Lots of sites are connected now to a backbone network as well as uh, available remotely. And there's three sites that have been doing quite a bit in the way of classroom experiments. Uh, NYU Poly, Wisconsin, and Columbia. 
So we think that's really important because it, it gives students a hands-on uh, experience with a wireless uh, base station and, and a whole wireless network. And uh, both us some traffic on the, the Gini world. So that's the, the summary I have. Thank you. So I'm going to report on the experimental roundtable session. For those of you new to the GEC, this is a session where we have experimenters and people building GE, the developers of GE, come together, experimenters share their, uh, provide feedback, uh, share their experiences on uh, how, uh, on the experimentation of GE, what worked, what did not work, and uh, the intent is that uh, the people building GE might, might be able to uh, put in new features, uh, enhance uh, parts of GE, make experimentation easier. And uh, might even be able to offer up tips to the experimenters on how they might be able to do certain things uh, more easily. At this GEC, we had um, three presentations, which were in the form of experimental reports. So essentially, experimenters talking about what they did. And we had one presentation on a tool uh, that uh, the currently is not a Gini tool, but uh, the, the speaker wanted feedback on whether the <coughs> Experimenters. The, uh, the three experiments that were presented, were, uh, the first one was uh, cloud-based autonomic service monitoring uh, in the Gini network. Uh, this was worked by Mohammed Anand and Levi, uh, and Levi uh, ES of Purdue University of Kalama and Musa uh, Ayash at Chicago State University. So what they had was they set up a, 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 a Reasonably large network with uh, uh, using the Genie Open Flow platform. There were about 17 Open Flow controllers in their experiment. They used cloud resources to, uh, to, uh, to uh, they, they ran their controllers, the Open Flow controllers in the cloud, and they also had monitoring software in the cloud. Uh, one of the, some of the challenges they faced was reliably uh, setting up and, and maintaining a large Genie slice. And uh, some of the suggestions they had were uh, more aspect examples. They would like to see more examples of aspects involving open flow controllers and, uh, and so on. And more examples of open flow, open flow controllers. They felt that it would be easier for them to, 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 get, uh, to, to um, get going to the experiments if they have more examples. So for each of these presentations, I have, I have the, uh, listed the challenges that the experimenters face. So those of you who are building tools, those of you who are planning on proposing to build tools, uh, uh, you might go. You might go. Uh, the uh, second presentation was uh, from, by uh, Yu Fei Wang, Flavio uh, Esposito, and uh, Ibrahim Mata of Boston University. And they are working on a project called Recursive Internet Network Architecture, RENA. It's a concept for the next generation new internet architecture. And the, their experiment was large, largely based on provision resources. And um, again, they do have uh, trouble uh, reliably creating and maintaining large slices. Uh, one of their challenges was connecting uh, resources across multiple aggregates. This is something that we hope that the stitching uh, service that, that, that is expected to come, uh, become available at the next GEC. We hope that will that will pop in there. And they also uh, complained about the need to, to, to continually keep the renewing slices so that they, so they don't they don't use the experiment. So running long uh, running uh, uh, experiments, long lived experiments uh, is a bit of a challenge because of the need for renewing resources. Uh, Denny Spurkin uh, uh, from the University of Houston uh, talked about these three different experiments she is doing with industry partners. Uh, 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 so the interesting aspects of her experiment involved, um, uh, she was actually trying to uh, uh, embed a resource management, management plate inside the slice, especially doing a uh, kind of like a genie inside genie. Uh, and um, which was 
quite interesting and uh, and the you know, she talked about some of the problems she had about uh, the management plane plane size. <coughs> she also talked about uh, booting custom OS images. She had custom OS images provided to her by her industry partners and because of differences in personalization technology, differences in um, image formats, she had trouble getting that going. And um, she also uh, tried to do something very interesting with inserting custom hardware inside her slice. Um, so uh, the good news is that all three experimenters said that they saw value in Genie. The, the reason they did this on Genie and the reason they're continuing to, um, to uh, work these experiments in Genie is because they thought that doing this elsewhere would not be possible. And so um, they, they, they're all, uh, they haven't given up. They're, they're working on getting um, uh, things to work. So that's the good news. Um, we do need to uh, work at helping them address these challenges. The fourth uh, presentation that session was by NFP of the same of ISI, who talked about a tool called Montage. It's a tool that's currently used in the Ditter and Emulab test beds. And it, it's essentially a, uh, designed for setting up and managing large experiments, experiments with large numbers of resources. So you can script your experiment, you can view your experiment, and you have multiple views on the experiment, you can provide handlers for failures, and then things like you will happen in a large experiment, uh, scribbles fail. So she did talk in a demo and uh, got some, some uh, feedback on how this might uh, work on you. So that was it for the session, uh, for that session. Uh, but while I'm here, I would like to thank all those who organized tutorials. I know it's a lot of work, uh, a lot of preparation. I uh, really appreciate doing that. Uh, and I also would like to thank those who participated in the tutorials. Thanks for hanging in there, despite uh, you know, failures of you know, the occasional failures, we have, uh, many failures we have in doing the tutorials. Uh, thanks for hanging in there. But many of you have told me that you plan on going back and trying these uh, exercises um, uh, uh, when you get back home. Please do that. If you did the exercises using a temporary uh, account, please get a permanent account because these temporary accounts will go away. Uh, but have, if you have a permanent account, uh, you're fine. It's, all the tutorial material is online, so you should be able to uh, try these exercises again. Uh, thank you very much. So I'm going to um, talk about the aggregate developer topic session. This was Tuesday afternoon, and this is a short version of what its past GD conference has been, a couple of sessions where um, people who are developing aggregate software um, or developing um, clearinghouses talk about issues of federation, trying to smooth the interoperability between the different players in the GD community. And as we're sort of moving past the the development stage is it's shrunk to a much smaller portion of the, the GC agenda. Um, and on Tuesday, I talked a little bit about the status of a couple of the, those topics. We have an aggregate manager API that currently scans at version 3. Um, it's being rolled out. Planet Lab fully supports it, and Protogeny is working out the last kinks, and others will follow. Um, and there are some changes for that API that we Agreed to will come out in, in the future. Particular notable is uh, update, allowing you to update in place your, your slice without deleting what you already have. So, you can, so Coffee Girl can grow her slice. Um, and that will come. We talked a little bit about R specs and all the, the R spec extensions that allow you to do um, new kinds of resources and new things. Um, there are a number of extensions out there and, and uh, more coming. Um, and, uh, and I introduced um, the problem of uh, the uniform experimenter experience. And this is something that we're going to have a full session on this afternoon at 1.30. Um, the issue here is that 
Um, aggregates are different. They have different kinds of resources and different features. And we want to highlight those. In particular, we want those to be um, uh, brought forward in the new tools coming forward in, in Solicitation 4 in a way that experimenters can take full advantage of, of what the different aggregates provide. But at the same time, there's sometimes differences just because the aggregate group built or are run by different people. Um, differences that aren't necessary, that don't um, highlight a, an important feature. And those are things which we'd like to smooth <coughs> over. Um, are there ways that we can ensure that you can always get a Fedora image on whatever your compute resource is? Um, I'm not sure exactly what the other issues are, and that's some of what we hope to hear from experimenters this afternoon at 1.30, and then talk amongst the, the aggregate teams about are there ways we can mitigate these differences that make things needlessly complicated for experimenters. Um, the other thing that will be happening this afternoon that, that we talked about briefly on Tuesday is the coding script. And this is a, a misnamed perhaps session where um, people from operations to experimenters to developers get together um, to talk about whatever is on people's minds. Um, traditionally, experimenters come to get help with some of the tutorials or with the research they're actually trying to do. And there'll be people there this afternoon to help with that. Um, folks from operations come to get some hands-on experience, some of the tools, the way people are using their resources. And some folks from the developer community get together to talk more in depth about things that have been raised over the course of the conference. And this afternoon, we expect to talk more about some of the, the things that people may raise at the Uniform Experimenter Experience Session. Um, and to talk about two other things that we also raised on Tuesday afternoon. Uh, first of those was stitching. Uh, Tom Lehman from the University of Maryland and Max talked about the prototype that he demonstrated then on Tuesday evening um, that lets experimenters reserve custom layer two topologies using VLANs. And this is something that we have been talking about for a while and now we have a working prototype that will be um, available for experimenters by the next GDC. Um, and this is very exciting. It, it starts to realize the, some of the real differentiators of, of Gene. And so Tom gave a, a status update on that and raised a couple of issues for best practices, how we can protect our operational partners from allowing experimenters to do bad things that would really harm the equipment. And that's something we'll talk a little bit this afternoon in the coding sprint. After that, Rob Ritchie came up and um, raised an issue that he's concerned about. Um, right now, it is very easy to build a, a hosted tool, a portal, that doesn't follow security best practices. Um, that will, in particular, tends to be the experimenter, asks the experimenter to give up their private key so that the tool can then go and do things on the experimenter's behalf. And we need to make it easy instead for the tool to do something that's more secure, but still experimenter friendly. Something we, we call speaks as, sorry, speaks for, where the, the experimenter authorizes the tool to do something on their behalf. And that's something that um, we, we a, a group are starting to talk about, and we're working out some more details of that, possibly this afternoon, more likely in, in the coming weeks and months. Um, so that I would encourage um, those of you who have tried some both Instagene and Exergene to, to come at 1.30 and share your experiences, and those of you who are developing those aggregates to come and listen and think about how you can use the experience for experimenters. And then um, anybody who has something they'd like to get help with or to discuss to come to the coding sprint at 2.30. So Heidi had to head out. Uh, I have her proxy to talk about the uh, two sessions that she organized. Uh, the first was the RACs at campuses and regionals uh, session, where we heard um, updates on testing and deployment and new feature status uh, from both the Exogeny and Instageny teams. Uh, we also heard updates 
from Cisco and their collaboration with uh, North Carolina State and, with, and uh, WVNet, um, building their rack, and uh, Dell's work at Clemson in standing up uh, their rack. And these were you know, details that we hadn't seen as much before. These are our new racks for the community. Uh, so that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. Peter O'Neill uh, presented some of his ideas on uh, documenting use cases of how racks are installed and function within a campus setting. And that spurred a discussion of, among campuses and, and regionals about policies for sharing data through uh, open full SDNs. And I, I guess Peter is leading a, a group of volunteers uh, to work through a use case to discuss uh, more specifics at the next GEC uh, for people who don't know Peter. Would you make yourself visible? He's right there. So uh, you know, if you're if you're interested in participating, please uh, please get in touch with Peter. Uh, in the operations and monitoring session, there was an update from the uh, GMOC team on uh, support options and what future services uh, we would like to see coming out of the GMOC. Uh, Chaos showed progress on downloading data from the GMOC and gave a live demo. Tom presented uh, work on stitching and we talked a bunch about how that uh, influences operations and what to expect in the near future from stitching. Uh, Sarah talked about the portal and clearinghouse and we did make, I, I believe, uh, a decision to uh, invite uh, rack owners to add the uh, GPO managed clearinghouse to the list of recommended GE trust anchors so that there will now be four uh, trust anchors in the GE Federation. Uh, you're familiar with the Utah and uh, GPO uh, protogeny trust anchors, uh, the PLC trust anchor, and we're now adding the, the GE clearinghouse. I think that's it, but uh, I was not actually in the second session much, so if there are items I missed, I appreciate somebody calling my attention to it. Different tables, different uh, layer two, layer three, uh, camps, and key camps. 
uh, which undermines uh, the semantics of priority here. These are all just examples. These are things that we should know about switches and how the implementations actually impact the way that uh, the way that we build the uh, SDN. I want to talk about uh, given the gene networking is sliced by VLAN and provides an open flow programmable contact for operators, there's some aspects of this context that uh, startups should be aware of when they're developing controllers. First of all, there are different kinds of open flow control control switches, pure and core hybrid and VLAN hybrid, that provide different contexts for controllers in terms of VLAN tagging and DPIDs. That these startups should need to be aware of and at least advantage. There are physical topologies, including perhaps that, that uh, traverse non gene resources that require handling of VLAN tags and ports in particular ways. And there are configurations which uh, Genie Aggregate needs to, or is advised to, perform VLAN translation in order to facilitate stitching. Those are examples of, of things that we'll put in my slides on. If you want to dive into the nitty gritty of life as a SDN program or So we're happy to take questions. Did people enjoy learning what springtime in, uh, in Utah <laughs> looks like? This is, it, it's, it, this is summer. It's, <laughs> uh, it's two days into spring, Steve. <laughs> uh, it stops snowing right on cue. Thoughts? We're trying a radical experiment with the next GEC. It will not be the same three days of the week. <laughs> yes, they will be consecutive. Bill. Now it is. So what I would say is that um, GC is very frequent, which is great. But going for a year is hard for some people. I find that some folks who would like to have been here before get travel for this way. And as more people start to use Genie, it strikes me that more opportunities for both our participation live and for archived view of the material are going to be very important. I saw a few, some of the videos of um, so I, I hope that those videos are going to be on the website at some point, but we will recover. Um, so there is a Genie channel on YouTube where these things get posted. Okay. And all the presentations made at the GEC will, uh, if they're not already on the website, will be there uh, very soon. So if you go back to the agenda, GEC agenda, and click on the session you're interested in, you can find the presentations. And, and I, I know there's a lot of effort involved in doing it, but some form of live remote participation would be, I think, great going forward. At least for select sessions that are So you think in a lot of the campus folks have to have trouble traveling to these models? Well, I mean, like it, it, I think it's a combination of, yeah. of you know, travel clubs are tight, and this is three of these a year. Yeah. You know, so, so getting a group to go to all of them is hard. Yeah. Um, you know, most of the people I know tend to just skip around, and depending on which one you choose to go to, which one you can skip, you might go to the support stuff. Mm -hmm. One of the things you're trying to do is also go to where people conferences that people might regularly go to, so these might be conferences where system administrators go to, where we might talk more about campus requirements, and, uh, and uh, research conferences where we might have tutorials. Thank you. Another thought that we've been
bouncing around a fair amount, but haven't come to a particularly uh, good conclusion on it, and maybe people have recommendations, is would it make sense to specialize the GECs somewhat to focus on particular portions of our community, to have a, a section that focuses on uh, or, or, or an entire GEC that pays more attention to uh, experimenters or more more attention to campus deployments or something something somewhat more specialized is that that's about as well formed as the idea, as the idea is does anybody want to throw some fuel on that fire at all Nick you made some gesture but I, I couldn't tell it was obscene oh no it's thumbs up okay good <laughs> Does that mean you're willing to, to formulate the concept in much more detail? Surely you must be crazy. <laughs> I support it, though. Thank you. Other questions? Thank you. Yeah. I think in each of the DC sessions, we would like to see a section included specific to security and how data security between different slices and how we can maintain the integrity of security of data. And if there's any research going on, I'd like to uh, actually reinforce the confidence in the experimenter or to actually report in a possible problem and fix where we can offer them what to fix those. Let so, uh, me see if I got that right. A session on security focusing, I believe, on more on operations security than on, yeah. say, security and experimentation. Yeah, if I have a slice uh, doing my own experiment and I want to make sure uh, no one else has an answer. So, because, you know, like a layer two topologies sticking together in an normal world, you can actually hop from one unit to the other unit. I wanted to make sure those kind of possibilities are not swept into this kind of politics. So. Okay, and, and I think we have, this is actually uh, potentially a, a very good um, uh, follow on to the, the, the conversation that Marshall was just uh, summarizing about sort of the, 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 the VLAN uh, and SDM environment that, uh, that Gene is offering to experimenters and you know, what is the level of of isolation. Uh, I think at this point we're shooting for something that's at least isolated and when you're, when you're not trying to be evil. You know, you know, you know, what people are misbehaving. Yeah, maybe some of the experiments may be Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we are, we are actively working on reducing the number of contacts that one needs to have with various bits of crypto stuff right, in order to use Genie. You know, yes, we need certificates. Yes, we need public and private key pairs in order to achieve the kind of security that we all want to have in Genie. The fact that we need those doesn't mean that you have to touch them. Right. Um, so the more we can put those behind a single sign-on uh, and a single password, the better. Uh, the various portals you've seen are steps in that direction. Um, I think we are the tools we're building already are working to improve that. And you know, I hope that also work we do under solicitation for 
pushes that even farther along. Um, but you know, are we going to have it all set in the next four months? No, we won't. But it's, it's an area of emphasis. Um, another thing, just to just check. Uh, in this conference, we tried to cover most of the and I noticed from, I, I attend two conferences, and I, I saw that you have parallel session. So you have to sacrifice one session to attend the second session. So I, I don't know if this is possible or not, that we requirement for minimize the overlapping sessions, so people can get most of the meeting in these days. I, don't think your students here. I wish I had one. <laughs> So, and the, the last one is the documentations. I think we need more documentation there. Because if you go to the tutorial, uh, it will tell you just put this line, put that line, and you will see these results. How we get there, how this was happening, nobody knows. Not we know, but we don't know. That's the thing. Because we, I don't know. We, if we can do this, just put more details in the um, tutorials, how to upload the stuff in the machines, how to, um, it's just reserve a slice and run experiment. What's happening under the hood, we don't know how to do it. That, that is a fair criticism, and uh, some of it is the desire to cram a lot of the tutorials. Uh, um, we, yes, we've heard that uh, and we will try to fix it. Uh, one of the things that we propose is, uh, uh, so one of the reasons for doing something like that is to give you a feel for what the capability might be, and then you can go back and try it, because that's what we need to do that. So we'll try to work on that for the next GC. So, uh, what I will mention is most, uh, most of all of these tutorials have like, Online walkthroughs that you know, go through everything in the tutorial, and sometimes, but not always, provide some more detail about what's, what's going on. Um, like, so for the one that we did this morning, uh, I, there probably isn't a link to the uh, on the wiki page for it, but there will be a Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Max. sessions. Uh, I think we basically, you, the problem is that the people who give demos basically don't see the other demos. <laughs> and those are the guys you actually want to stand, those are the guys you actually want, you want them to see the other demos so they can all steal from each other. Right? Uh, now, I know we've been through that having my usual suggestion was to have two demo sessions, half-half, and then this half can see the other half, but uh, we talked about that that's logistically that difficult. Maybe, there are, maybe a, a simple thing or a, a sort of a lighter thing would be that, you know, many, many conferences you have sort of kind of a poster session, you have sort of this one-minute madness where everybody who gives, as a poster, gives a demo, just goes up there and has one slide, 30 seconds or a minute to basically say what they're doing yeah. so that you get a, a very quick sort of over, overview of what's going down. At least then you can sort of very strategically pick which demo you're going to and make at least the time to see one or two which you're really interested in. Also, could we have a much larger room for the demos next time? Yeah. Could we have a much larger room for the demos next time? <laughs> something, something the size of a football field would be probably about right. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out those are surprisingly difficult to come by. Well, yes. <laughs> Joking aside, I, I did think that this year, this, this session's room was a little closer, but they keep my eyes standard. <laughs> Okay. Um.
<laughs> so um, for the tutorials, we found that the having the room set up with the tables with two people at a table um, helped it for two reasons. One, it naturally encourages people to be in appropriate pairs for the tutorial, which we do a lot. And also, it provides a clear aisle to access and help people out. So that worked out really well. Although one of the rooms that we had some of that we had that in some tutorials, but not others, and that was really helpful when it, we did have it. But also, there was a safety issue with the cables in some of the rooms. It was a little treacherous. Okay, one more, and then out of respect for people's lunch, I think that will. So uh, I don't know if it's technically feasible, but uh, if you could find a way to have screens sort of around the room, maybe at the back of the room, and in demos, people would actually be able to see what's going on. Because I don't know, I can't say how many times I heard someone say, you know, can you make the text larger? And, and they try to make their, their terminal larger, but you, you still can't see it. It's just kind of, I mean, it was futile. Okay, um, thank you. We'll, we'll try to do some of these things. Some of them are, you know, hard. But uh, appreciate the suggestions. Uh, I think we could keep this conversation going a little while, but uh, we people have planes, people would like to eat lunch, and uh, I'd like to uh, wrap it up and get you out reasonably close to on time. So first I'd like to uh, make sure we, we thank uh, Rob Ritchie, Steve Corbato, thank you so much for lending us your place. Thank you, Christopher and Karen, for all the work and getting everything together. We had a, a very smooth uh, GEC, I'd say. I'd like to remind everybody else, I, the, I hear these things happen three times a year. Um, so our next one will be in Madison, Wisconsin. Carmesh Ramanathan will be our host. Uh, I'll you some. Um, well, thank you, and we will keep having these. We are moderately well programmed, but uh, if you look at the forward GDC calendar, you will see there is um, a, a missing slot, so we are looking for uh, volunteers. Please, if you're interested in posting the GDC, uh, do let me know. Several reminders. High level goals for Spiral 5. Keep the racks rolling out. Get them working. Gain great confidence in them. Have more people using them. And clean up the user experience. Cut down the number of passwords. Cut down the amount of friction uh, in, in setting up an experiment. These things combined with outreach will lead to increased use in research and in education. We've simplified everybody's calendars. There is one date to remember. <laughs> Gene solicitation four is open through April 15th. We invite your proposals right after you submit your taxes. The GPO is very happy to talk with you about your ideas. You know, other than discussing other people's proposals, which we clearly can't do, uh, the door is wide open. We're glad to talk about specific ideas. We're glad to give you specific advice. Please take advantage of that opportunity. Yeah. The application deadline for the second Genie Summer Camp in Connecticut at the University of Connecticut is April 15th. If you're interested in attending, uh, please talk to Kai Chi or Bing. Uh, there are also Information sheets with sign-up information available at the registration desk. Pick one up, come yourself, bring your students, invite your friends. We've had a, it's been a very productive week in the past. It's a very good opportunity for somebody who's got an interest in Genie but hasn't had the, the time to focus on learning the different components to, uh, to spend a week and produce a project as a side effect. White papers on mid-scale infrastructure for computing research are due on April 15th. Okay. This is uh, breaking news, but uh, for those of you who monitor the uh, 
CCC uh, blog, uh, the, the, the consortium is looking for our input. And if there is a community that should have input on its family infrastructure for computing research, it is this community. So please, if you, you have something to say, uh, take a look. Uh, white papers are a 10 page maximum and it's due April 15th. Yes, Steve. Mark, I, I'm on that committee. And yes, you are. And I want to apologize for the convergence on April 15th. <laughs> uh, but we're being encouraged by NSF to submit our report as soon as possible. Just so people understand, mid-scale infrastructure here is larger than the typical MRI, CRI bread box. And so projects like, like Genie and, and, and Probe and, and, and Orbit uh, are, 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 are considered past examples of this. And, and the real question in front of this group is, what, what should we do next? What kind of structures and, and, and research support mechanisms should be put around these large-scale projects? So I, I imagine people have an opinion here. Uh, we definitely want to see it on paper. And, and again, story about April 15th. But 10 pages is a maximum, and I believe yeah. it says shorter is better. Yeah. So and, and you can ask the IRS for extensions. You can ask the <laughs> <laughs> a different day. Uh, please come to, oh, that should say the 17th meeting, a little bit too much cut and paste, but please come to Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, see you all there in a few months. Thanks very much. Thank you for coming.